Are you planning to settle in the capital of west coast of Karnataka? If so, here is a ready-to-build property adjacent to Mangaluru city amidst lush green, which indeed is the right place to have a happy home. Just 20 minutes at a distance of 10 km from the heart of the city, located at Nir Marga, is one of the most prominent developing area of Mangaluru city limits. A peace and serene place surely be loved by your dear ones. Surrounded by natural trees and valleys, the 13th sense plot of solid terrain is the destination for construction of your everlasting dream home. Various educational institutions, hospitals, malls, historical and religious places at close vicinity will be additional booster for your comfortable and holistic lifestyle. The ready to sail plot located near Manipal University's proposed campus will assure you good ROI if you are thinking in terms of investment. Contact plus 9181-971-43675 or 8217-729859. I'm Meena Norona and we are back with another episode of Walk the Special Path. Today we have another guest in the field of special education needs, Dr. Ramandeep. Welcome Dr. Ramandeep to our show. Dr. Ramandeep has started her career as lecturer at Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing and also at Dr. M. V. Shetty College of Speech and Hearing. She has worked as principal at Kids Eden Montessori School, Nantur, Mangalore. She received her PhD from Mangalore University thesis entitled Descriptive Analysis of Language Among Hindi-Speaking Children with Intellectual Disability. She has published a book on body awareness for children with autism in 2022 from Manipal University Press. She has even done additional courses such as Montessori Teachers Training Course from Global Training Academy, Sensory Enrichment Therapy, a therapist module from Mendability. She accomplished her diploma in Child Psychology and Applied Behavioral Analysis from Center of Excellence. Apart from being a director at Speranza, she is also an assistant professor at Father Muller's College, Department of Speech and Hearing. She has presented various papers in national conferences and conducted workshops on positive parenting and so on. Dr. Ramandeep, welcome to our show today. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you, doctor, what advice would you give the parents who are still in denial mode once they get the diagnosis of their special children? I would say denial is a very uh, dangerous word because denial is something that prevents us from early intervention. If you ask me what is early intervention, this is something that you need to identify the problem as early as possible and start searching for solutions to it, the treatments to it. So for example, if there is a child who is say one year old, I did notice that my child is not speaking. At one year, the level is say uh, speaking in one word doesn't uh, work or the child doesn't say then probably in another two years time there will be two words which the child doesn't say again at three year level there will be phrases which the child doesn't say so over the time what happens is if i do not start with the therapy if i do not start with treating my child say language say uh, behaviors anything over the time the child's problem starts increasing so one thing I am uh, making it a danger for my child because there could be that the child may not uh, you know become or come in par with the other regular children because of this because I didn't identify at the right time I didn't start the therapy at the right time True. so the severity may increase one thing True. another thing I am losing on a very important time period say there is a sensitive period or a very critical period in the initial period of our life, say for children. So what a child learns is going to stay for a whole life. Right. Whereas what we learn as adults, probably we generally forget it. So again, this sensitive period or critical period, at this time when the remediation is given, the best 
kind of you know treatment can be done at that time and the best outcome can be taken at that time so by denying i am uh, you know keeping this uh, at risk for my child and in future probably the whole uh, you know future of my child is uh, at risk because of this very true i think acceptance is very important, important. so dr ramandeep how better do you think we can be inclusive of our specially children and their families inclusion basically i believe is a two way thing it has to come from one side from the child's level from let's say a special child and the team who's working with that special child say there is a parent there is a therapist so one side this child has to uh, learn a lot of things and almost come at the level of the society say there are behaviors i should work on those behaviors and i should get adjusted to the level at which the society can start accepting me also if there is communication if we are talking about so the communication should at least come to that level the basic level that is required so for inclusion to work or for inclusion to happen i should uh, as a parent to a child or as a special child we should start you know training these children to this direction also on the other hand there is society so rather than staring at a child who is having a problem or rather than you know telling my child don't play with this child and things like that we should start accepting this as a very normal thing because we have a lot of successful stories which do tell us a lot of successful people who have proved this fact that being a special child i can reach a particular level maybe i took a longer time yes maybe i put extra effort and things like that but no doubt a special child can also reach a very good level in life and be successful so the society also should accept this things that that you know i cannot stare at a person just because he is having some problems so this is something very normal as a fever or things like that so let's accept it as it is and start you know involving these children into our day to day lives yes i agree i think inclusiveness is the mantra we need today so doctor uh, could you tell us something about child language disorders how early can it be diagnosed and how can parents uh, know about it what they can do knowing that their child has language disorders these language disorders i would say are of two types there is a receptive disorder and an expressive disorder what this means is there is a problem in understanding these are receptive disorders so let's say i'm talking about an apple so forming an image that okay apple is something circular it's a fruit it is for eating so understanding all these things is reception expression is talking it out so these language disorders can be a combination of both the problems or it can be just the talking problem now this can occur by itself so i can just have a language problem or it can be that my language is delayed because of say autism because of down syndrome and all these you know conditions because of this i can have a language problem so uh, how early if you ask me as early as say 6 months so 6 to 8 months child is going to start babbling so there are you know these ba ba ta ta these small small sounds that the mm-hmm. child is going to start producing Correct. and probably as a mother if i'm talking the child is going to imitate after me so as early as say 6 to 8 months or 1 year max to max by at least 1 and 1/2 2 years will be an early intervention so as soon as possible i would say start uh, realizing that there is a problem in the child and start the intervention for the child also okay as a parent what i can do is start talking to the child or i can say as a first step accept that there could be a problem with my child that my child is not really talking or imitating back at me with those sounds so after accepting what you can do is start talking to the child bombard the child with a lot of language inputs we call this as stimulation so start giving this kind of language stimulation to the child keep talking to the child and at the same time create a lot of opportunities for child to respond so let's say i know that my child needs water right now this is the time he generally eat, after eating he drinks water i purposely keep the bottle a little far away so then i start you know asking things to him so what are we going to do now tell me what's this and things like that and give him some input something like mum mum or water something like that and then he has to start imitating back okay. at you thank you doctor you explained so nicely in very simple language I think I would say uh, early intervention is the key to for yes. uh, improving child's language or any other problems. Yes.
at the premium gateway to Mangaluru, one of the premier cities of Karnataka possessing all types of domestic and international connectivity, is a full-fledged commercial complex, the premier Kana Nandur, now available to make your dream venture a reality. Each floor is spread across 4,200 square feet to provide a class ambience to your clientele. Adding to all safety norms, the premier corner is all set to be a game changer for any business, thanks to its easy connectivity. Located right beside NH66, premier corner has been built in view of futuristic needs with ample space for vehicle parking in two basements. The G plus 3 storey building is the right place to start premier ventures like corporate office, vehicle showroom, IT firms, exclusive retail shops, brand outlets and to add on a terrace cafe. Come invest and own this premier space at Premier Corner. Contact plus 9181-971-43675 or plus 9176762181 for a premier business deal. Dr. Ramandeep, I know you are the director of Sperenza and it's a very good running school. How would you say your centre is different and unique from so many other centres in Mangalore? I would like to say that I am into a very noble profession and so is anybody who's in this area. So I wouldn't really look at it as uh, how can I make my centre unique or different from the others. Instead, I would look at it as when somebody comes to me, basically they come with a trust. So I am going to at least keep up to that trust, do my best to, you know, start also another thing, one thing do my best and the next thing will be it's the child's future that are, that is in my hands now. Now that the parents are coming to me and bringing their children and asking me to teach something to them, this will be the first thing that you know generally coming into my mind, one. And how do I justify into this is one thing we have a lot of IEP plans. IEP is individual educational programs. So these programs or these plans are nothing but if I have uh, let's say 50 to 100 children, every child is going to have a different plan because the problems vary, the levels of the children are going to be different. So one thing, these plans should be made, they should be tailored according to the needs of the child. So if the child is taking behavioral therapy, speech therapy, every therapy, every domain should have a different lesson plan made for them. One. Next, there has to be a good documentation. So in my center, I really believe in documenting things down and charting the progress. So okay. if the child, let's say, is going to come for one year, I cannot really keep working in the same direction for this whole one year. So it has to be that every, say, 20 to 30 days, I have to check whatever I'm working on, whether it's really working on the child or not, and chart down the progress, change things accordingly, or continue the same direction. Okay. So that plays an important role. Next thing what plays an important role is parental involvement, teaching them things, showing them the demonstrations of how you are doing things. All this and including the parents into the therapy is again important. Last thing I would say is sexual health education which we have uh, you know started is very very important in today's world. So this is one area any child that comes to me we start uh, you know remediating them into this direction because through this we are going to get a lot of you know, outcomes and making them successful becomes an easier task. Well said, Doctor. Uh, I think you have published a book. Can you tell us something about that book, uh, Dr. Ramandi? and how it will benefit the parents. Uh, so as I mentioned, sexual health education. So this book is going to uh, focus on these areas. So it starts with, now the book is mainly for autistics. It says autistics, but then it can be used by any uh, parent who is a uh, parent to a special child. It can also be used by regular parents because this gives tips on how body awareness can be taught to children. Now body awareness is something you knowing about your body, understanding which are the the, you know which are the body parts number one which are the private parts which are the other parts etc this starts uh, I would say there's a uh, you know common misunderstanding that this should start somewhere around pubertal level or say at eight or nine years when my child is a little grown up no it should start somewhere around two years so the book describes how exactly right at the you know beginning how you can start okay. Uh, you know, training these children into these directions. Also, the book has a lot of activities and strategies can be used by parents uh, just by, you know, looking at the book at those strategies, you, they can pick up these strategies and start teaching the 
uh, children about all these uh, areas. Uh, can I ask you, doctor, where this book uh, is available for parents to collect? It's available on Amazon, Flipkart. It's also available in my center. It's from Manipal uh, Press. So it is available readily at the center. And at the center, there are also discounts available for this. I think if parents are interested to know about this book or to have a copy, I think in order it and read it and it can help you surely. And uh, doctor, I would like to ask you, as you are a director of the school and uh, you are a professor also, uh, doctor, how inclusive is today's society? And how we can work towards a more inclusive community? Because I think that's a need of the our inclusiveness. Uh, it's very important now for special needs children and parents itself. So how would you uh, describe that? How can we have a more inclusive community? So for inclusiveness, as I earlier said, there has to be both the ways that we should work on. <clears throat> there has to be the parents and the team with the child who should bring the child to the level of being accepted right. and at society now what happens is in society we have I can say uh, three things one thing is the general uh, area something like I go to functions I go to uh, say temple church and things like that so in a group my child should be uh, adjusting to things so the society at that level should understand that if a child is sitting with closed ears I should not be really staying staring at the child. So this acceptance or this understanding should be there at these areas. Second, at the school level. Now the educational system is, uh, I would say it is so much of competition that maybe initially children they do get promoted to some level. At 8th standard or something the schools really uh, you know realize that if this child does not reach the 10th standard level, at that point the school's image also is going to get bad. Yes, so very at, true. Yes, at that level um, of you know uh, there has to be an acceptance or you know start doing things right from the beginning. So if there is a child who is a special child, we do know that probably he will not clear the 10th standard there should be at the same time some simultaneous classes given on say uh, NIOS training it's uh, now NIOS is an open school training where uh, you know there are different uh, subjects that can be picked up you don't have to really study everything that is there in 10th standard so you can focus only on say five subjects out of which one is language and the other is you can pick anything where uh, you know painting it could be data entry which can further help you in life so these kind of NIOS trainings should begin right from the beginning rather than waiting for the child to adjust till the 8th standard level and then you know removing the child from 8th standard and then starting to uh, you know wonder now what do I do because he doesn't even know reading writing right now. So schooling is another area. Last one jobs. Inclusion is very very limited in jobs. It is very challenging for a special child to prove to let's say an office that I am eligible enough to work like the other empl employees. So the whole fact that okay this is an autistic now I am not I cannot um, employ him pay him and then you know even start training him. So at the job level level also we require people to understand even if you pay less to this person include him and teach him certain tasks. For sure this child is going to be as good as the other employees yeah, for that, that is job very area. important I think inclusiveness okay. is the need of the art. So doctor what all areas will be need to be worked among the children with special needs? The areas now if I keep saying that we should work for making the child come into the uh, setup of inclusion then the first thing we should look at is uh, his communication level. So he should be able to communicate to people. I am not really talking about uh, speech specifically. It can be even if the child is not speaking. It can be certain apps or certain we call it AACs. It's alternative augmentative communication. What this means is there are various apps. So even if I'm a non-verbal child I am going to hold a tab with me. I am going to have everything that I need to communicate in that tab. It can be I have pain, I have stomach pain, I, I need to go to the toilet and everything. So what I can do is when I want to communicate, I don't have to throw tantrums because people are not understanding me. I can just carry this tab or this phone anywhere and I can uh, point out True. through this. So first thing is the communication that we need to work on. Next we need to work on is uh, literacy skills or reading, writing or doing some maths and trying to understand. Now, for example, in today's world, we need to really locate things. So locations, maps and you know, real life training of all this. So at least basic 
basic literacy skills and basic mathematical skills mathematical skills can be using a calculator using some help no doubt but at least understanding that if i have bought two things these have to add up and this much money i'm supposed to give so these kind of concepts next thing what we really require is as i said the body awareness or sexual health education to protect ourselves from various dangers and for sure a skill that i should have so if i'm sitting free if i'm sitting idle somewhere my energy has to go so let's say now uh, i have painting i have computer skills and i really love doing this particular thing automatically my behaviors my problems are going to come down because my confidence and my self esteem increases yes. after doing this so all these things at a stretch and also i always tell everybody that i cannot this is like a balanced diet so i cannot really pick among the therapies that okay today or for a month i'm going to pick only speech therapy. therapy and next year or next month i will pick up literacy skills all this has to go hand in hand because if we are looking at my child being successful or independent then all these things need to be provided at the same time and then he is going to use it later in his life that being social communication is more important important very attention here are two properties located just adjacent to nh73 at melkar bc road which is the place most appropriate to realize the dream of having the home for a happy living just 30 km drive from mangaluru the west coast capital of karnataka two layouts of 20 cents and 19 cents respectively with village ambience are ready to build with clear documents the hill opposite to these properties are reserved for the proposed university campus of a prestigious manglo based institution giving you indeed the right investment opportunities in future payas religious centers around will give you a spiritual feel amid modern lifestyle on time healthcare facilities and educational opportunities are available within reach contact 9181971436758 or 8217729859 yes doctor i would like to know what is the importance of parental involvement with training the special kids most of the parents really now they are in denial mode once they accept they feel scared of the society what others will say i think most of the parents have this issue with them they are scared they are thinking like what others are going to say leave others they always worried what their relatives are saying what the family members are going to say what a sibling might feel so the parents are always in that hesitation that fear of society of anybody of being judging so how you think the importance of parental involvement is there uh um, like i said uh, it's very easy for me to sit here and say accept the fact accept the fact i know it's very very True. challenging to actually be in that situation and fight with so many people around you and say that my child is going to do something in life so uh, first thing i would say i should uh, that's the reason we have parental programs i should be educated enough to tell people now by education i don't mean literacy skills what i mean is i should know that there are people who have done this 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 in their life look at them so let's say you are a person who are sitting and framing a view point about my child i can tell you i uh, 10 people who are who have done something in their life so you cannot say that my child is a waste or my child is not going to pick up certain things because from let's say 1 year till 10 years this is where my child has shown a progress so uh, parental involvement again if you ask me uh, as a therapist it's very limited that we can do max to max we can stay with a child for say half a day or let's say complete day till 5 o'clock i stayed with the child the things that we as therapist or teachers can do with the child are very limited what a parent can show a dedication the ch- the way a parent can treat a child and be with the child for a longer time is going to have a major effect on the child so parents understanding the therapies parents understanding various requirements and then going about in that direction is very important so parental involvement i would say is the basis for any child to become something in life yes very correct i think because i personally know it i am a mother of a special needs young adult mm. and i think i am completely involved with special needs areas and a parent to be happy and proud of a special needs child is very very important and to love unconditionally exactly. i think that's what you would yes. say <laughs> uh and doctor before i conclude this i would like to ask you if you would like to leave a note for news karnataka what would it be 
first thing uh, i would really thank the channel for bringing up these special this issue of special children because like you said people need to uh, understand like relatives and all before making an opinion you need to really understand what is happening in this area so it is not that when i have a child with autism or if my child is having down syndrome now this child is completely a waste child no so people should understand that there are so many things that are uh, you know good about these children and they are also completely trainable just like another regular child so for the society these kind of programs are very important number 1 so the society should look at this and learn that all these good things are happening also as a parent like we discussed the parental programs are very important so as a parent to a special child uh, knowing about a successful story there are you know people there is one uh, person in chennai who does web designing there is one uh, model pranav there is one model who is an autistic and is the first uh, autistic model in india so understanding these kind of things will really help parents also like you said not feel demotivated or not feel sad when you understand that there is a diagnosis attached to my child. child so start looking at it from this view point that okay there is a problem but now i'm going to fight through it so through this uh, channel i would like to you know express this thing that one thing as a society we really have to be aware about the fact that the child can do something in his life and become very successful just like any other child and as a parent because we know these kind of things we have to really be committed in reaching or making my child reach that area thank you very much thank you dr ramandi for joining us and thank you everyone it's uh, we'll be back with another episode of walk the special path thank you